Thank you for buying your 2022 planner from Playing Office. This video will take you through how to use every aspect of your planner. So as you can see right now, we're on the home page and I'm going to start by taking you through the menu. So the menu will always be on every page. As you can see at the top, you have the home button, which takes you to the index for all of your notebooks. The heart takes you to your sticker book, your built-in sticker book, which you can copy all the stickers that are included with the planner, or you can store your stickers wherever you currently store all of your digital stickers. You also have the 22, which takes you to your master to-do list. The dollar sign takes you to your expenses landing page. You have January through December to get through all of the monthly pages. And at the very bottom, you have all the templates which you can use to insert anywhere you like in your planner. And to get back to this page, you will just click this home button right here. So this is the master index of all of your 24 built-in notebooks. And the way that you get to the notebooks is by pressing any of the numbers on the home page. So as you can see, that takes you to notebook one. This section lets you keep track of what is in your notebook. So if you have, you know, multiple things related to the topic of your notebook, you can keep track of all of that right here. And so I'm going to press the home button to go right back to the home screen. And this is, like I said, your master index. And also you have a note section to keep track of any notes that you might want to jot down really quick and put elsewhere in your planner later if you don't have time to get to the exact page you need to get to. Next under that is the heart. To click that, this is going to take you to your built-in sticker book. And you can paste the stickers that come with this planner right here if you'd like to have easy access to them or you can organize them however else you organize your stickers currently. By clicking the 22, so you have this master to do list, which you can access from any page in your planner. So when you're planning out your days, your weeks, your months, everything, you can easily refer back to this page by clicking the 22 right here on your menu. You also have direct links to all of your quarterly planning pages if you want to organize your content that way. So I'm gonna take you to a quarterly planning page. So this is where you can plan out your quarter. So you can easily take any information from your master to-do list and copy and paste it over here, keep track of important dates. Um, and anywhere that you see a calendar, in the planner, just know that these are links. These will take you to your weekly pages and these will take you to your daily pages. So you can get to any of these days also. So after you finish planning out your quarter, you can go on ahead and click on any of the days of the month and you can add those to those daily pages immediately if you would like to. So now I'm going to get into the menu at the top so these letters and this heart will be at the top of every page depending on what page you're on so these are well actually these four are all related to monthly planning so this is your micro tasks which i'm going to get into which is like your goal planning this is your monthly expense page this is your habit tracker and this is your monthly overview so all of these will change based on the month that you're on so these will link for instance to january's uh, goals micro tasks expenses habit tracker and overlook and if you have the content planner this is what this is related to um, if not then you can just ignore that part and then for the content planner, this is the content brainstorming link for the month that you are looking at. And then also back to the notebooks. You can get to the notebooks, as I mentioned, by clicking the home button, going to the index page. So all 24 notebooks are at the top of every page of your planner. So you can easily get to your notebooks. But if you don't remember what the index is or which notebook you assign something to, that's when you hit the home button key to get back to uh, this page to see what it is. Or if you want to add something to the index page, then you would go to the home page. But other than that, you can get to the notebooks from anywhere in the planner, including the stickers page, anywhere. The, the templates you can copy and paste anywhere. So if I wanted to copy this page and place it behind notebook number one, it's 
So now back to the menu. I'm just going to start and go to each of these pages, starting with the expenses and show you exactly what they look like. So this is your expenses page. You have room to keep track of all of your expenses for the month. You also have a calendar. And again, you can get to any of these days by clicking them or any of the weekly pages by clicking the weekly link. You also can get to any of the other monthly expense pages. If you want to reference expenses from previous months or upcoming months, you can easily do that. So you're in January. If you want to go to July, you just click the J for July and you are um, on the July expenses page. The E on this menu takes you to the expenses landing page so you can get to all of the 12 months of the expense pages but you also have nine blank expense pages in case you want to keep track of other expenses whatever that may be you can write that up at the top right here and then you can also keep track of it right here on this page so this is kind of like your home page for your expenses. If you want to keep track of recurring expenses or, or anything, if you have, you know, paying down debt and you want to just keep track of that separate from your monthly expenses, that's what you can use these pages for. And now I'm going to take you back to the quarterly planning page. And this is something else, another link. Anytime you see a month on any of the pages, it will take you to the quarterly planning page for that month. So I'm just gonna click January and now I'm on the January through March quarterly planning page. So you can get back to this page by clicking the month on any page or a, again by clicking the 22 and then clicking the quarterly planning page you wanna get to. So now I'm gonna go to the habit tracker. This keeps track of any habits that you'd like. And you can also have a key down here if you wanna keep track of moods. So for instance, if you wanna keep track of a mood, and then you wanna assign a color to that, then you can add that up here as well. So that is something that you can do. And then as you see, you have links to your expenses, your overview, and your goals, um, micro tasks. And again, to get back to the quarterly planning page, all of your notebooks, and you can click on any of these links to be taken to the daily page. And you can click on any of these links to be taken to the weekly pages for that month. Next is the monthly overview. So this page lets you plan out your whole month kind of get an idea for the things you want to focus on and if you want to break up your to-do list and the things that you want to get done by the week you can do that here and if you want to keep a monthly affirmation and notes and then the way that this planner works because weeks are shared with other months so there are six weeks in january but the first two are only in january and the last five are in february so the way that it works is the you will be planning the first five in january but since most of the week or since the beginning of february also shares the last week of january you will be planning that week together with february so week five is where this start stops and then the week six of january will be week one of february and i'll show you what that looks like on a calendar in a minute so this right here um, your top 10. This also relates back to your goals and the micro tasks, which I'm going to get into in a little bit and show you more detail. But these right here, these darker gray, these filled in bubbles, take you to your 10 goals micro task pages. So when you decide what it is that you want to get done for the week or for the month, and those are your top 10 goals that you kind of want to focus on, you can write these here. And then you can go add them to the micro task page individually and start working on those. And then from the overview, you also have the review. So this is at the end of the month. You also, you still have your micro tasks that you can write and see how you finish them, how you, um, com how you did with completing them. You can use this notation if you'd like, and then you can reflect on what went well, improvements to make next month's focus, and gratitude and then if you on the review page if you click on next month's focus it will take you to the 
micro task overview page for that month. So I'm just going to click on that really quick and that will take you to February's micro task overview page, which I haven't gotten into just yet. So now onto the monthly pages. As you can see, you have the same links up here, expenses for this month, habit tracker for this month, overview, your goals and tasks, and brainstorming if you have the content plan. So what I was talking about before about sharing weeks. So there are six weeks in January. The last, the first week has the first six days in December. First week has December and January. And the last week has January and February. So you can get to any of the daily pages by clicking on the number. And you can get to the Bible study page by clicking on the top right corner. To get to the sermon notes for the particular week on the Saturday square, click on the bottom right corner. And that takes you to the sermon notes for that week. And to get to the weekly page, you're going to click on the bottom left corner of the Sunday. So I'm just going to highlight these really quick. So you have daily Bible study, weekly sermon notes. So on the weekly page, you have a whole bunch of room to have your time to schedule right down the left hand side. I left that up to you, whatever increments you want to use, if you want to use half hour, hour, two hour blocks, whatever that is, and the time frame up to you. So that might change throughout the year. If you want to wake up at a different time during, you know, a specific time of the month or week or year, you can change that up for you. Depending on what week you are on, it will always be underlined and you can easily flip through the weeks just like that and the underline will change. And as you can see, you have two months worth of calendars here. So just from one weekly page, you can access, for instance, this the last week of, Jan of December, all of January, all of February, and the first week of March, all for one weekly page. And on the weekly pages, the additional letter that you see up here is the meal plan. So this button will only appear on the daily page and the weekly page because the meal plans are linked to the weeks. You plan your meals by your weeks. So to go to your meal plan, you just click the M and as you can see, that week is underlined as well. And you can plan out your meals for the whole week. You have room for your grocery list. And again, links to your, your expenses, habit tracker, overview, goals, and links to your quarterly planning pages, all of your notebooks. And you can also go between your weeks for your meal plans. So you're on week five of January, but if you wanna go back and say, oh, I really like lunch on week two, let me go back and copy that. You can easily refer back and forth to your different weeks. So how I mentioned before about January sharing the last week with February. So it has a link to week six. So you won't be planning your January meal for week six. In January, it will be the first week of February. But if you click that, it takes you to the February week one meal plan. And you can see right here, the calendar, the lighter gray, these are the last two days of January, and these are all the days of February that you can plan your meals. So now back to the weekly page, you have your, again, your meal plan, your expenses for the month, habit tracker for the month, overview, your goals, and these are for your content planning if you have the content planner. You also have links to all 10 of your micro tasks right here, which again, I will be getting into later, and all of your notebooks. You can also get to any of the daily pages by clicking any of these links on the calendar or any of the days. So if you wanna get jump to the first, you can do that, and then you can go right back to the, the weekly page by clicking the one for this week. Down here at the bottom, there are to-do lists and you can title these if you want work, personal, however you want to categorize your to-do list or you can leave that blank, it's up to you. For the content plan, I'm gonna get into the content plan a little later, but 
the content planning is broken up in two weeks as well because when you're planning your content you it's broken up in two weeks so you can plan up to six platforms or different for instance like instagram facebook twitter your blog pinterest whatever you can plan up to six different platforms worth of content um, for each week and so that's what these numbers are for and then the b as i mentioned before the brainstorming and then the weekly content breakdown that's what the c is for so now i'm going to go over to the daily page and again you have the same links as the weekly page you have your meal plan for the week expenses for the month habit tracker overview goals for the month links for your content planning all of your notebooks and the top 10 of your micro planning and then you have all of january the last week of december and the first week of march right here or the first week of february right here you have a timed schedule that you can choose the increments and the time frame you can write out your schedule and the top three things that you want to focus on and a running to-do list, and then a whole lot of blank space. If you want to use widgets, stickers, take notes. Some of the stickers that come with this planner are bullet lines and graph. So if you want to have bullet over here, if you want to have it blank over here, you get to decide and plan it how you would like. So to get to the Bible study page from the daily page, you just swipe over. And now you're on the Bible study page. And you'll notice that on the daily pages, any of the dated pages, when you click on the day, the circle tells you what day you're on. So you can easily tell what day you are on just by looking right over there. And of course, it is um, written out. The day is written out as well. But when I'm looking at the calendar, I like to know quickly what week I'm on and the exact day of the month. And again, if you click the the month it takes you to your quarterly planning page and click that and you're right back at the daily page and then swipe right over to get to the bible study page so this gives you a lot of room to journal to draw to doodle whatever you want and again with the stickers that come with the planner you can put more lines on the right hand side you can do graph whatever it is that you want to do you can add that right there you can also, again, get to the Bible study page directly from the monthly page by clicking the top right-hand corner. And now you're on the Bible study page. To get to the sermon notes for that week, you click on the bottom right-hand corner. It's the same template as the Bible study page, except you have the sermon title and the speaker. And again, you can use whatever widgets, templates, um, stickers you want to customize your sermon notes. And with the Bible study and the sermon notes, you have the same links for the meal plan, expenses, habit tracker, overview, and your micro tasks, as well as your notebooks. Okay, so now I'm going to get into the micro tasks. And to get to the micro tasks for any month, you click the heart. So the idea with the micro tasks is that this is how you can break up your goals into manageable steps that you can visualize and you can uh hopefully will help you to complete them one thing that i know i personally have a problem with is setting a realistic time frame for how long it will actually take me to complete something and this really helps you to do it so you have room for 10 you can copy this if you'd like but you have room for 10 t goals that you want to accomplish for the month and this breaks it down so this is where you would write down exactly what you would like to do for the month right here um, how long, what date do you think you'll actually complete this goal? What, or what date would you like to complete it by? And you can check it off once it's actually completed. And as you're progressing through your goal, you can fill this in. And any notes that you want to take, you can put right here. And this is just the, the overview page so that you can refer to it really quickly to see how you're doing with the goal. And again, right here, you have links to your expenses, habit tracker, overview, and the content brainstorming page if you have the content planner and a calendar so you can color code this if you'd like if you want to give each of your tasks a different color and you can you can mark off different parts of the calendar to indicate which days you are trying to complete each goal by or however you'd like to use it 
And then if you click the to do, it takes you to your actual breakdown for your micro tasks. And then you have your monthly expenses, habit tracker overview, and this takes you back to your micro task overview page so that you can get back to the main layout. And then you can also switch between all of the 10 micro tasks right here. And you also have your notebooks up here. So you have room for your progress on this micro task that you're doing. The to do again, the estimated completion date, and if you completed it. And so this is where it actually gets down to your micro tasks. So you're breaking up your overall goal into, into steps. It might take you 14, it might take you less steps, but you have room. So you would write the overall goal or to do right here and then break it up into steps. And so if the first step is research, how much overall time do you think it's going to take you to complete that? If you're if you're researching, say you wanna write a book and you wanna do some research, is it gonna take you two weeks? Okay, let's say it's gonna take you two weeks to do some research. How much, so you, you, would, you would write two weeks here. How much time do you wanna spend each day doing that research? Okay, you're gonna spend two hours a day. So that's what we write here, two hours a day, for two weeks. Now, what days are you actually assigning those that those research hours to? So let's say we're looking at the January calendar right here and you wanna assign the 2nd through the 14th. So you'd write two through 14 right here. And now you can keep notes here. You can use these boxes for anything you'd like to keep track of, um, images, links to websites that you've reviewed or whatever it is that you'd like to do. And you have this notation right here for either if you've completed the step, if you've moved maybe the step or the whole task to the next month, or if you've decided that you're not gonna do it or you're putting on the back burner, you're not sure about it, and that would be archive. But once you have assigned the dates that you would like to work on the tasks, now this is where your calendar comes in handy because you're saying you're assigning weeks two uh, days January 2 to January 14 you're going to go to that day and you're going to write research two hours so you're going to put that in your top three so that this will help you focus and realize that these are the things that I want to get done these days in order to make sure that I meet my overall step to work towards my goal for the month and so in these bubbles, you can, to keep track of it, this could be your micro task number one. So you can write one here, and maybe you don't have any other micro tasks, you can just leave those blank, but your micro task number one, you would put a one here so that you can keep track of exactly what it is that you are referring to. And then you can use the same notation. If you've completed it, move it to the next month, or archive. And then you can get back to that micro task or any of the other micro tasks right here by just clicking the one it will take you to micro task one and again you have these links to your micro tasks on your daily page this is your weekly page and then on your overview you have links to your micro tasks right here and on your review page you have links to your micro tasks right here so that is how the micro tasks work and it's integrated into the whole daily and weekly page um, system. You can access it from, from anywhere in your planner um, for each month. Okay, and so now we're gonna get into the content planning section. So this is the content brainstorm section for the whole month. So you can start here, or if you click on this M, and this M and the hashtag link will only appear in your content planning. So if you click on the M, this is your master content section. So when you're starting the year off, if you kind of want to brainstorm for the whole year, have an idea of the content that you want to cover, this is where you can plan it all out right here. And then clicking on the month will take you right back to your content brainstorming for that month. So the months are broken up into weeks, just like with the meal plan, the last week of the month will take you to the first week of the following month because they share a week, except for April. April ends on a Saturday, so it doesn't share a week. The end of, the, the end of April does not share a week with 
the beginning of May, so that's the only exception. So this right here, for instance, this week six will take you to week one of February, but you can get your February week one planning started. Again, if you click January, it will take you to your quarterly planning page. So the whole month is broken up by week and clicking week, weeks one through six will take you to the content breakdown for that week. And as mentioned, when I was talking on the weekly page, this will take you to any of the six content planning pages for the whole week. So for each week, you have six content planning pages. For this to make sense, the easiest thing to do is to assign what you would like numbers one through six to be. And you can do that right here on the hashtags and keywords page. So this page right here is where you can keep track of all the hashtags you want to use, the keywords you want to use when you're posting. You can keep track of the topic, the content type, the audience. So this key right here is where you can keep track of what numbers one through six mean for you. Now you can use icons if you want, the icons that are included, or if you're using it for something else, then you can do that however you'd like but right here you can just write in whatever you want these to be give me the background no shadow and then i type the letter that's too big I, I chose a white background so you can't see the number behind it but if you don't care or if you can remember what you assign the numbers to then that's good for you but i'm just using the letters or you can use icons whatever you'd like so once you decide what you'd like, one through six, I'm gonna copy that. And then you can also get to the content brainstorming pages right here. And then each of the weekly content breakdown pages right here, but we haven't gone to those yet. So I'm just gonna go back to January. I'm gonna paste and I don't need this. So I'm gonna delete that. And then I'm just going to paste those. You really only need to do this once. And a little bit easier. So you copy that and you paste it on here. So basically for week one, you have Instagram, your blog, Pinterest, TikTok, Facebook, and your app. Week two, you have those same exact platforms that you can plan for. So when you, so when you click on week one, this is where you can, so you're going from, so the B takes you back to the brainstorming. So when you're here, you're brainstorming what you want to plan for each week. And that's just a general overview. But when you click week one, then that lets you break it down into much more detailed information. You can decide if you want to uh, post the same things on your all your different platforms, if you want to post different things on your platforms. And again, if this is enough room, you can copy this page and then add page current template and then it gives you now you have two pages for week one of your content breakdown and all the links will still work or if you want different pages you can go to your templates and add in any of these pages that you want it depends on what works for you so now on here as you see it has the same links so i think once you get used to it you might not have to post um links to your different content or your different platforms but it's up to you if you want to do it every week for every page that is up to you and so here you can plan out your content for that whole week this is your week one of january and as you can see it's underlined so you know exactly where you are in the month and again this calendar will take you to your weekly pages and your daily pages and your expenses have a tracker overview and your micro tasks overview page right from here as well and you can get to all of your other weekly content breakdown pages and again if you click six now i'm in week one of february because it shares a week the last week of january so now we're going to get into the content planning pages themselves so let's say i'm in week one and i've decided i've already you know i've planned out my content for the month and I know what week one is going to be about. I've 
written that out on my content breakdown page. Now I'm going to get into actually planning the content that I will actually be posting. Then I click on that and you can paste your and as you're switching through so i'm just going to copy this because the spacing is a little bit different on the content planning pages okay so as you're switching through the different content platforms you'll notice that the circle around the content the circle is um, highlighted so that way when you're on the page you know exactly which page you're planning for and this is all within week one so like I said you have six pages to plan for the entire week so you can plan for your Instagram for week one your blog for week one Pinterest TikTok Facebook your app all for week one and then you can go to the week two content breakdown and then you have links for all of that for week two and then to get back to week one, you just click week one and then go to the content platform that you want to go to and start planning. So you have room for all of the notes that you want to take. You can put more lines over here. You can plan out your layout. You can do whatever it is that you want to keep track of. And again, you have links to your daily and weekly pages. And then this is just a way to keep track of, you know, when you actually posted it, how many people did it reach, likes, comments, opens, all the kind of pertinent information that you want to keep track of in regards to the post itself or the newsletter or whatever it is that you sent out um, so that you can come back and kind of say, okay, so in January, how did that post do? You can kind of keep track of those types of stats. And then also on the content brainstorming page, I left this part blank so you can have room to keep track of notes or things that you want to focus on for the next month, anything that you kind of want to um, plan out. And I made this calendar larger so that you can kind of have an overview of your content. So even if you wanted to color code your different platforms, you could do that. I just did it that way so that I could move that up. Then when you go to plan out your content, you can kind of have an idea. Maybe you don't post to every platform every week. Maybe you don't post, you post to some every day, once a month, you know, twice a week, whatever your planning schedule is. You can have a quick overview of your content and know exactly when you're posting, where and when. And this is just a really quick overview. And you don't have to, of course, use all of these different components. You don't have to use the master content page. You don't have to use the content breakdown. You don't have to use the content of the content brainstorm or the content breakdown. You might just go straight into your content planning pages. It's up to you, however you want to use it, but it's all here for you to organize it however makes sense for you. And then again, when you go into the daily pages, now you have links directly to, depending on the week you're on, to get to your content. So if you're planning out your day for February 9th, and you're like, okay, I need to plan. You're like, I need to post for my newsletter today. I haven't sent out a newsletter in a while. You're right here. And you know that your newsletter is number four. You can go right to your newsletter and plan out all of your newsletter content right from your daily page. You can do that also from the weekly page. What am I planning for my TikTok for week three, uh, for week two? That's what I'm doing. You can just plan that out right there. You can jump right back to your weekly page from there. And the content brainstorm is the same for the whole month. So that B is at the top of most pages for the month. But the um, content breakdown for the week is broken up by weeks and days because it changes based on the week. So I hope that this helped you understand how your planner works. Really just get in there and start using it. But please, if you have any questions, please DM me. I'm at playing office on Instagram. You can email me at hello at playingoffice.co and I will be posting tutorials and videos on Instagram. So if you have any questions, please, please reach out to me. And thank you so much for supporting Playing Office.